I had heard all about the blizzard and about how, you know, terrible and horrifying it was going to be, but um, I just didn't really want to deal with it. So I stayed in bed, loafed around till about two o'clock, didn't really leave the house. Finally, I went outside and I realized that I didn't really have a shovel. So I went out to kind of survey the car and it was buried under about, you know, four feet of snow. And there was no way I was just gonna claw it out with my hands. So I walked over to Kmart. I remember just being kind of pelted by snow the whole time and starting to get a sense of how challenging this was going to be. So I came back started on digging my car, and uh, while I was undigging, there was a guy across the street with a snowblower. So I was undigging my car, and he was sort of redigging my car. So, I don't know, I flashed him a dirty look or two. Uh, he wasn't really paying attention, and I didn't really want to take it to the next level or anything, so I just tried to dig out faster than he was digging me in. Finally, I got it out. I was starving. I hadn't eaten anything all day. I don't know. I had like, you know, rotten tuna in my fridge. So my first stop was the grocery store. It was like I'd won a shopping spree. I just uh, grabbed everything I could off the shelves, anything that looked remotely appetizing, you know, grapes, oranges, tuna. <laughs> I got out back to the car and I thought like the worst of it was probably over. But actually it was um, about to get a lot, lot worse because I live in Uptown, and A, nobody's really friendly to each other in Uptown. Everybody's kind of mean and nasty and rude. And B, there's no parking spaces. So what I decided to do was just try to park the car in the middle of the street and hope that nobody came by. But of course, another car came by, and I just threw the shovel to the side of the road. And I was so frustrated, and I got back in the car, and I, I reversed it, and I totally forgot about the shovel. So at this point, I'm driving around. I don't have a shovel. I don't have anybody with me. I have no way I'm going to park this car. So I just decide that I'm going to drive over to the Kmart across the street. I get there, and I get in the same situation that I've been in a million times that night, where there's two cars in front of me, and you know they're not going anywhere. They're stuck, and the drivers are out of their cars and yelling at each other, and they can't, they're trying to pull each other out with ropes, and you know it's a mess and then there's a car behind me, and I'm stuck in the middle, and the car behind me is beeping at me to go, but I have nowhere to go. So I'm just so frustrated, I say, screw it. And I just floor the car and try to pull out into the middle of the parking lot to go around these cars. And of course, I get completely stuck, at, but not even stuck in a sensible way. Like, my car is just at this crazy, clowny angle in the middle of the parking lot. It's like I was popping donuts and just got frozen mid-action or something. And at this point, I, I'm, I'm a little delirious. Um, like, my shoes are frozen. So I'm walking on these blocks of ice. I'm starting to, you know, lose sensation in my toes, etc., etc. So I get out of the car. I walk over to Kmart. I buy these huge, like, Eskimo boots. I'm clomping around. I feel like a horse. And uh, I go back out to my car, and I decide I'm just gonna leave it there for the night. So I grab my groceries, they're like $70 worth of groceries, and I just start trudging home. And I, I sling it over my back. I'm carrying this load, I'm like, you know, one of the Egyptian slaves or something. And eventually I start to feel these stress tears in the paper bag. And so I, I pick up the pace, but I, I can't outrun these stress tears that are starting to form in the bag. And the bag just caves in. It just, basically explodes. Everything I'd bought, these grapes and, you know, this beets and tuna and, and, and bread, just spills over the street. At this point, I, I, I just want to sort of give up. I want to lay down in the middle of the road and wait for, you know, my body to, to uh, <laughs> I don't know, wait, wait for some, just wait for death, I guess. And, um, but I get back up, I start gathering up my grapes, find the tuna, and just start slogging my way the rest of the way home. You know, I fall a few times. I don't want to get up again, but I sort of marshal all my resources. I feel like, you know, my survival is on the line, and, and, and I, I'm just crying at this point. Like, I don't care if anybody hears me. I'm moaning, I'm cursing, and I'm getting closer and closer, and, and then I can see my apartment, and, and finally I'm there, I'm at the front door. So I walk inside, I just throw all my crap on the ground, I don't even care. 
um, my parents had called earlier, so they knew that I was going through this ordeal, I guess. So I reach in my pocket to call my parents, and my cell phone's gone. And I never lose my cell phone. And, and here it is. It's this new iPhone. I've never owned an iPhone before. I've had it for two weeks, and it's out there somewhere. So I went back out. I sort of excavated the spot where my, my groceries had spilled. It, it was like an archaeological scene because every, everything had been buried under again. Like, cars had driven over the spot, and so, you know, I could see a little fragment of grape sticking out over here, or a little finger of plastic. And so I just started kicking at the snow and at the ice. And at first I was pretending like I was actually going to find it, but then, it, but then it was just because I was angry. So I was clawing at the snow and the ice, and there was just no way in hell that, you know, I was going to find my phone. So I started walking around again with my head in my hands, moaning and groaning and, and tripping again and laying there in the snow and just sort of wallowing in my frustration. And I guess that's the moral of the story was it was just one of those nights where it feels like there's somebody, you know, watching you. There's somebody who can sort of control the, the you know, the puppet strings of your fate who's just trying, it's just, it was just one of those days where it felt like somebody was trying to break my spirit. And, you know, I could rise to the first challenge, which was unburying my car, and I could rise to the second challenge, which was, you know, getting groceries, and then the third challenge, parking my car, and then, you know, the next challenge, walking all the way home. But there had to be that one final wrinkle where I just felt like, you know, why even go on? But eventually I found my phone. So that was, you know, the one bright spot of the night. Sleigh bells ring. Are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight. We're happy tonight. Walking in a wind. 